Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you got your numbers in there. Okay, so we're dealing with 42,600, 900, 18,900, 9550, of course 10, 60, 20. And we get 90, 20, 8, 7, 6, 6, and 2, 5, 4. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Hopefully you balanced what you should have got. Okay, now before we do the balance sheet, is there anything we have to remember when we're adding a cross or whatever? What's going to happen to this investment? It's always going to be zero. And what's going to happen to retained earnings? Do we use these? Nope. And how about common shares? Do we use this? Yep, but we don't use the sum. Okay, so we fill this in. 16,200, 59,500, Remember, it's got a credit balance. That's why it's negative. And 2750 and then 800 and that'll work out to 96450 and then down we get 29200 22900 25000 and then 320 for the liabilities and that should work out to 96 450. So give that a try. Uh, make sure it makes sense. Don't forget to look at all four of those things. Okay, so now that we've completed the statements and all the calculations, I want to kind of give you some what if questions. What if we change something? And the big thing we're going to change is we're going to sale of equipment downstream. Okay? So this becomes pretty mechanical. Then you get the actual thinking things. Oh, what if it was switched? Well, on page five, so we're done that. But what if the sale of the equipment were downstream? Recalculate NCI. So take a second, calculate it, come back. So our NC is going to be 10% times, and you can look at page 3 if you wanted, 9,000 plus 6,700 plus 2,750. Now, Looking here, this is all upstream. So if this was downstream, would this be here? No. So that would be it. There would be no upstream. And so that would equal 1845. Everybody good? Okay, now let's look at recalculate income. So here's net income. This was the upstream one we had. Now it's going to be moved up here because it's downstream. How will that change consolidated net income? Will it change if it's added or subtracted down here versus up here? No, this will be the same. What will change is the 2540 and the 60. So that means, are these two guys going to stay the same? No, because the minute this changes, it's going to change, which means this is going to change. Okay? So let's write that down. Consolidated net income will be the same, but 
the parents and NCI's portions will be different. So the subs adjusted net income is going to be So look back at that. What's the subs adjusted in? Well, we're not going to have this. So it's going to be downstream now. So it's just going to be 2310 minus 10 equals 2300. So NCI on the income statement is going to be 10% times 2300 equals 230. So the parent's share is going to be 920 because that doesn't change minus 230 is 87.90. Okay, now we're going to look at recalculating ending retained earnings. So you need page 5. Oh, which is right here. Oh my goodness. So, with retained earnings, sometimes it's just better to recalculate. But what's going to be different, just so we can get it straight in our head? downstream goes up here. So all of this part goes up here. Okay? So let's calculate that. <coughs> so the parents retained earnings is going to be 18700 what they started with. But now we're going to take off the 1200 and add the 480. Minus the 1200 plus the 480 is going to be 17980. So now, what's the subs going to be? The subs is going to be 2500 minus 3383. This stuff's all gone, so that's it, times 90%. 2500 minus 3383 times 0.90 equals negative 25. So, the total is going to be 17185. Now, either way, ending retained earnings and NCI on the balance sheet will total to Uh, 1903. So you can check that yourself. For that. Okay. So that's a kind of thinking question. What if? What would we do? Okay, let's go on to page six. And 
This is a little summary of intercompany transactions and depreciable assets. Um, you can just read through it, it's just kind of a summary of what we did. Okay, now what I want to do, and we did this already last chapter, except now we're at the depreciable assets, but it's like land inventory, same idea. So we are doing the equity method of reporting intercompany profits. So equity method used by the parent, same transactions still apply at acquisition, portion dividends received from the sub. And those have different accounts to record net income from the sub and the changes, sorry, the amortization impaired acquisition differential and unrealized gains or losses. So this is changes in AD. Same thing. However, this time we've got to deal with that. Um, decrease in accumulated depreciation from the unrealized sale of the assets. Uh, sorry, it shouldn't be accumulated. That word should be incremental. Sorry, if you can just cross that out and put incremental. So, using um, our example that we just went through, year five didn't tell us the income from the sub, but we know net income if it was going up, then investment would go up. And this would be at 90%. Amortization impairment or changes in AD. So let's look back at page two. We're doing year six, no, we're doing year five, sorry. It's 33.73 times 0.9. And it was going down, so the investment's going down because net income's going down. Now remember, we're doing year five. So let's look at page three. And we have the upstream gain on equipment and the incremental depreciation in year five. Now, which numbers do I use? After tax. Remember, it's after tax. Okay, so that was a $1,200 to 0.9. And that was the gain. We made net income go down. So the investment's going down, and that's 1080. So that was page three. Page three. Now, the 240 for the incremental depreciation, and it's upstream. Net income's going up, so the investment's going up. And again, it's 0.9. Okay? So, for this, your sources are changes in AD schedule, unrealized, realized schedule. There's no basic transactions. Watch, because net income comes up or down. What did we say was weird about Dream? They're at 100%. Everything else is CI, controlling interest percent. And remember, it's after tax, and it's just for the year, because you do the entries every year. Okay? So let's go on to page 7. And 
And we have net income from the sub. This time we know how much it is because we have the statements on page four. Just have to find too many pages here. The questions are too long. Oh, there it is, page four. So page four, we know the subs balance was 2310. So this is net income from sub, 2310. Amortization impairment, that's page four, is on page two. And for year six, it is 10. Net income's going down, so investment's going down. Now, finally, we look at our year six. Only this one is used in the equity method because these were last year, right? We already recorded them. So only the current one where net income is affected. So net income is going up. So investment's going up. And that's on page three. Okay, so put a little reminder only include transactions that affect the current year. In this case, it's year six here. So now we want to ask a what if, and just before we do, if you go back to the last page and we can number our transactions on page six. Make it a little easier. Okay, how would the entries change if the sale was from parent to sub, so downstream instead? Okay, year five. What would change if it was downstream instead? Well, number three and number four would be identical, but it would be at 100% because it's downstream. Now, year six. What would happen in year six? Number three would be at 100%. Again, because it's downstream, we don't have to take 90% for NCI, it's 100%. Okay, so that's the equity method. You have to be able to know how to do all the calculations, all the statements.